So as part of this wheel hub removal tool, pretty simple, it's in the box. You got your hub remover, and then you've got all these nuts. I'm gonna show you how to remove a rear wheel bearing. This is the bolt-in hub style. My other video on how to do it with an air hammer. Check that out if you like. I'm always looking for a faster, cheaper, easier, better, more gooder. Found this thing called a hub shocker, a hub buster, or a hub remover, and it's about 125 bucks. You can do this job at home. Do this in the driveway on jack stands. Remove your axle nut. You can see where it was staked down. There's no reason to remove that indentation before you remove the axle nut. You could if you wanted to, the screwdriver just pound it out, but you just basically just spin it off and it'll force the nut off. Usually I hang it on a little S hook, but I'm just gonna set it on top of the controller. Now you wanna try to remove this rotor. There's four of these, there's two on each side. Those are a 14 millimeter. So that's not doing anything. Before I forget, let's put a little rust penetrant in here. Here's the tool mounted on the bearing. Now I just need to fasten uh, the tool to the bearing. So this is the nuts that were on the vehicle. I don't want to destroy these or, or risk damaging them. You can see and hear the play on that bearing and see this tool move. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna go to a sledgehammer, but I have a feeling this is gonna do the trick. Let's try it. First time ever. Pretty excited about this, so. Did it move? I'm not sure. Here we go, let's try it again. Oh, I think the tool might be moving on those lug nuts. Lug nut could rock on those washers, but let's hope it doesn't. <clears throat> Here we go, one, two, three. Oh wow, we definitely got some movement there. That's awesome. All right, here we go, one more. Oh wow, oh wow. That really did the trick. Would you look at that? Holy cow, that's awesome. I officially love this tool. I've done quite a few of these bearings and not one of them has been easy. And I mean, I just had a little bit of washer lug nut issues here. That's minor, but pff, dude, this is the way to go. This will be the fastest bearing I've ever done on the back of one of these suits. This is so awesome, I can't even tell you. This is gonna save so much time. Let's push our CV axle out. Here comes our bearing. Look how easy that was. Get that out. Clean this hub out as much as you can. And then I like to clean up this flange right here so that you don't cause any alignment issues if you get a piece of rust stuck under the new hub. I like to use a little bit of grease. A little bit goes a long way. A dab will do you. This is the reluctor ring. It's built into the bearing. Go ahead and reinstall this bearing. Make sure you torque this down to the right spec because it helps ensure that the bearing lasts as long as it possibly can. The CV joint is actually what's holding the two halves of the wheel bearing together. This is the outer half and then the hub unit's got an inner bearing and an inner half on it. Spend a little bit of time on um, Google and look up the exact spec for your vehicle. And sometimes if you can't find it, you can call a parts uh, supplier and they'll supply it with the bearing. This ring around the edge here, this is a lock ring for the nut. So it is reusable even though it's got this little indentation from before. You can reuse this several times and there's no problem with it. Some people 
may disagree and say that you should replace it every time and that's okay too. I never replace these ever unless there's damage to them or unless a new one comes in the box. Let's get it snugged up with the impact here. Okay, so you can see that our old indentation went a little bit beyond where it needs to be. So we actually have some fresh meat here in the nut, which is good. But either way, you can reuse this indentation also. And that looks good to me. 